Oh, so excited. <laughs> um, trying to log in here. It just goes so slow. This is so much slower than my other laptop. The jack is fixing. All right, I think we're going to... And we are going. Hey, good evening. This is Tony Dottino, and I am doing my live with Tony tonight on our brain health and a couple of uh, articles that I was reading uh, uh, during my afternoon reading uh, hour. And one comes out of the Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, Mind, Mood, and Memory. And uh, it's the uh, August uh, 2020 issue, so this is what we're going to be talking about. There are several little briefs in here that I think are crucially important for people to understand. And then I took one uh, from the current issue of New Scientist magazine. And when I say current, this is the July 25th, 25th issue. And what they're talking about here in New Scientist is the impact that the COVID uh, is having on mental health. So these are two things that I've talked about, uh, things that are uh, really making a difference uh, and, and see if we can uh, get people to pick up one new thought and one new uh, habit or, or exercise. So let's go through it. So the first thing quickly, uh, we, Somewhere in the world, you have to be either experiencing, living, and dealing with the uncertainty of the continuation of COVID-19 and what that uncertainty continues to bring to us. And so there's problem number one. Now, if you've got family members and spouse members, you have relationship uh, bumps. We're living with people now constantly without these social breaks or these activities. And so that's number two. We have family members that we could be uh, bouncing into, uh, kids and parents and what have you. So uh, worrying about our jobs, our financials, our financials, our own health. Are we getting, uh, if we go out, can we bring it back to somebody else? And so uh, the New Scientist article is basically saying we have elevated levels of anxiety and depression. And uh, we gotta do, what are we going to do? And so I come along and I pick up this Massachusetts General newsletter and say, okay, so what are we going to do? Well, one of the things I've been talking about is exercise and the importance of exercise. And here's an article that comes out of here that says, memory gets better when blood flow to the brain improves. Now, why is memory important? It impacts our stress levels, it impacts our anxiety levels, it impacts uh, our post-traumatic we may have from this, which is one of the things they worry about with people coming through this COVID-19. But what happens is, is exercise uh, showed that 47% improvement in memory scores after one year. And other studies have shown the difference it's had in the uh, hippocampus, which is where we store our memories. Now, we, I've been talking about exercise and exercise, but I'm going to add two other things that they have got in this current issue of the newsletter. And one is how parks, how greenery impacts healthy well-being. And, and so I say, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, we got to get to a park? Yes, there's been a number of research studies that have talked about the power of green, and, and, and green in trees, green in grass, green in walking paths. And as this study reflects, it says here, for people leaving in, living in cities or in more rural areas, no, more urban areas, green space serves as an escape from the asphalt and the steel of the surroundings. A team of researchers published the findings that delved deeper into the benefits of parks uh, to people. The ideas such as living in a pleasant environment and doing activities you value uh, is important. They said taking advantage of green space fulfilled 
nine components of a healthy lifestyle. And what this goes on to say, the researchers published their findings in the Journal of Public Space, but they said they hope that when we think about this, we're looking for a pleasant environment. An environment, it can well be your house and the window, what do you look out at? Pictures, uh, I've been talking to people about pictures, and I always show them the picture that I have on my wall uh, let me make sure I show you my favorite picture, and I look at that, and there's a lighthouse, and it's got sand dunes and water, and a bit of a glow on it, and some, some bushes that are coming up, and I, I can look at that, and it's very peaceful, so it's part of my environment. Uh, we sit here uh, at the back of our, our house, if you can see all the way across the way here, and I sit there at that table, and I have dinner and breakfast there, and sometimes I'll sit there and have lunch and read, and there's the pine trees that I look at there. I just glance at the pine trees, and if we have a storm, uh, I watch them sway, and they move back and forth. So I utilize my environment. So this is talking about having a healthy environment. And if you live in a city and you're not able to have this type of an environment, then go to pictures. What kinds of pictures do you have on your wall? I'm very particular uh, about uh, the annual calendar I get and the pictures that are on the calendar and, and trees and streams and waterfalls and sometimes mountains. So what they want you to have is a pleasant environment. They want you to be growing as a person. This is where I find the memory stuff, the mental challenges so crucial to us. And this is why I am a big proponent of our Maximum Memory Mastery online course for the skills that it teaches people that allow them to accelerate their learning, expand their mental capacities, develop cognitive functions and, and thought patterns in life creati life's creativities that they just never thought possible. So to that degree, uh, it talks here about it's important to have growth, you, that you need to have growth within your own life. So what are you doing now during these periods of time, which could be very challenging and difficult, but on a personal level, what are some things you're doing in your own personal life that are helping you to feel that you're not paralyzed, but you can in fact are growing through this awful time that the world is facing in terms of trying to survive and stay well and stay alive. Whereas this report that's coming out, published in the Journal of Public Science, is talking about what are we doing to maintain a level of growth and that we're learning something new and that we're expanding and, and not being stifled. Even though we're quarantined, what can we do to add some level of growth into our life? And that's a crucial factor in terms of our memories and our brain health and things of that sort. And then uh, the last part, at least for now, is being part of community. So here are the three things. So first thing you wanna do is recognize you wanna have the right environment. And I say to people, find an hour a day and go find your space. Go find some place where you can be alone or be to yourself where you can just reflect and maybe meditate or maybe do yoga, or maybe just sit there and, and listen to music. Find something that gives you the space and the comfort to pull yourself down. Second of all, Think of something you could do in learning new skills. And the Maximum Memory Mastery has got a lot of different little vignettes in there that you can do to help you to, to, to bring that one. And of course, being a part of community. Now, part of community, we've talked about social interaction. And part of community, it's amazing, through COVID-19, I've lived uh, where I am now for two and a half years, and just within the last five months, it's amazing what I've learned about neighbors that either are walking, bike riding, by sitting out on the front stoop or porch and uh, having a glass of sangria, or maybe it's a glass of uh, seltzer water. It doesn't matter what the glass is. It matters them sitting on the, our front porch every uh, evening in the 4.30 time period. And I'm um, seeing people walk by and they'll stop and talk. Now I've got distancing, probably got 10 feet of distancing, but the, being part of community, being part of the community that we, we live in and what I've learned in about we've got a great neighborhood.
And isn't it fabulous to have a community that supports and helps one another and is a part of assisting, okay, somebody's going to the store today, is there something I can pick up for you? Or somebody, we're going to the store on Friday, is there something that we can pick up for some of our neighbors? And we're trading back and forth uh, what our neighbors and, and self can do. We had a neighbor today, uh, we're go they went to Costco and sent me a text, hey, is there something I can pick you up in Costco? I said, yeah, I love their smoked salmon. And bam, wouldn't you know, I had some smoked salmon tonight, which was just fabulous. It was really terrific. And it was a result of a neighbor who was going through a Costco and he was messed up and everything else to protect himself and needed to get some things uh, at Costco for his own family and asked if there was one thing. So I'm very careful, only one or two things. I don't give anybody a shopping list of a half a dozen. It's can I get somebody to pick up? Uh, I've, my other neighbor on the other side on Sundays goes to our public supermarket and I ask you to pick up the Sunday edition of the New York Post. I am from New York and I love the Sunday edition of the New York Post. So again, community, community and maintaining some level of social contact and I'm constantly reading. So as I'm talking to you here, uh, you know, I'm reading through you know, the articles in New Scientist and picking up some tips here. I'm reading through the Massachusetts uh, General Newsletter, Mind, Mood, and Memory, and I'm at least constantly learning and I constantly feel that I'm growing, which then gives me the ability that when I see some of these newsletters that say, when you're 60 or 70 or 80, you fade into the sunset, I go absolutely nuts because I don't feel, I'm a senior, I'm over 65. My doctor says, you gotta keep practicing all the good habits of COVID-19 quarantine. And I say, these are the tips that I'm sharing with you tonight that I'm practicing in my own life to help me deal with the uncertainty. I clearly do not feel isolated. Boy, I've learned how to use Zoom more now than I ever thought I would. Staying in touch with people, and I'm still an old fashioned, pick up the phone and talk to people. And uh, maintaining community relations, helping neighbors out and being a part of getting out least outside for an hour every day, even if you just sit on a chair and listen to the birds or the, watch the, the birds swim in the pond that we have that we can observe from our house. That's my tips for the night. Uh, boy, the, I, I look at trying to give you at least a few tips each time I'm out doing a live with Tony, and those are some of my tips for the evening. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday, I'm back on in the three o'clock time period. So for all of you, please, uh, hopefully there's something you can share with me that you're grabbing from these broadcasts. Uh, I love doing them. I love sharing and educating people, and I want to continue to, to do that. So that keeps me going, keeps me growing, and we'll see you tomorrow in the afternoon uh, for Thursday afternoon live with Tony.